SHRMCP and SHRMSCP Prep Part 2 By Human Resource Prep Which of the following is most important to the effectiveness of performance management systems? Career Development Opportunities Performance Improvement Plans Participative Management Style Clarity of Performance Standards The answer is D. Clarity of performance standards is most important to the effectiveness of a performance management system. Clear communication of performance standards is necessary for the employee to know what is required and be effective at achieving set goals. Expected and evaluated behavior must be communicated clearly. How has talent acquisition been affected by social media? Recruiting has become more transactional. Human Resource Information System, HRIS, has become a strategic tool in talent acquisition. Passive candidates are easier to locate. It provides metrics of competitor intelligence. The answer is C. Social media makes it easier to locate passive candidates and connect with them. Social media provides access to networks of key connections. It enables recruiters to engage talent and gather insights on candidate expectations. Social media involves real-time communication which enables the building of proactive talent communities. Which of the following is the most important rationale for developing an organizational effectiveness and development OAD, program? Based on the results of a needs assessment. If an organization is experiencing a loss of market share. If an organization is transitioning from the maturity stage to the decline stage. If an organization has a bureaucratic and hierarchical structure. The answer is A. The development of an organizational effectiveness and development, OAD, program must be based on the results of a needs assessment. A needs assessment is a systematic process for determining and addressing needs between current conditions and desired conditions in knowledge, practices, skills etc. Analyzed data from the needs assessment will determine if the issues would be solved by an OAD program. Which of the following converts HR metrics into decision support tools by providing additional conditions with which the data can be fully understood and assessed? HR Information Systems Balanced Scorecard Organizational Effectiveness and Development, OAD, Program HR Analytics The answer is D. HR Analytics enables HR professionals to make data-driven decisions to attract, manage, and retain employees. It helps leaders make predictive database decisions to create better work environments maximize employee productivity, and increase return on investment, ROI. HR strategies and objectives often stem from analytics. HR metrics collect and tabulate HR data with examples such as turnover rates, cost per hire, engagement rating, revenue per employee etc. Which function has the greatest responsibility for prospective revenue? Human resources. Marketing. Research and Development Operations The answer is C. Research and Development is the function responsible for future revenue and market share. R&D refers to innovative activities undertaken to develop new services or products, or improve existing services or products, and facilitates future product development. R&D differs from the vast majority of corporate activities in that it is not intended to yield immediate profit, and generally carries greater risk and an uncertain return on investment. However R&D is crucial for acquiring future revenue and larger shares of the market through the development of new products. What is the term for brief and frequent surveys that address specific issues or are given to specific sections of the labor force? Quarterly Survey Pulse Survey Engagement Survey Tactical Survey The answer is B. Pulse Survey is a fast and frequent survey that is designed to be done weekly or monthly. Pulse Survey give a quick insight into the health of a company in certain areas such as engagement or culture. 
A pulse survey is conducted on employees or customers on a periodic basis to get a sense of the health of the company by evaluating employee satisfaction, productivity, and overall attitude. Pulse surveys focus on specific issues or specific populations of employees. What is the most distinguishing feature of constructive discipline? Provides an opportunity for employees to correct their behavior. Fosters appropriate behavior through decentralized leadership. Focuses on the positive points of employee behavior. Delineates between intent and causative factors in discipline. The answer is A. Constructive discipline uses discipline as a means of helping the employee grow, not as a punitive measure. It imposes increasingly severe penalties for infractions, and allows the employee one or more chances to modify the problematic behavior. The constructive discipline process may include a verbal reprimand, a written reprimand, suspension, and termination of employment. The employee must know the rule beforehand, be aware of the punishment, and the degree of action taken must correlate to the seriousness of the offense and the employee's record. What is the major policy challenge for global HR based on organizational policies and a diversity and inclusion approach? Ensuring all policies abide by localization requirements for conformity to the operating environment. Ensuring the organization's policy is fair and egalitarian across business functions, diversity factors, and company locations. Ensuring human resources policies are identical across countries to ensure uniformity and consistency. Ensuring human resources policies are ethnocentric in nature and reflect the culture of the home country. The answer is B. A global organization has the challenge of ensuring that its organizational policy and its diversity and inclusion strategy applies across all the organization's diversity factors, business functions, and global locations in a fair and equitable manner. Making all policies identical or ethnocentric is not the best option as global policies must be standardized and yet flexible enough to allow for unique local needs and peculiarities. A firm has begun to transfer responsibilities that were customarily done by higher-level leadership to lower-level leadership. This is best described as Vertical integration Team-based structure Seamless structure Task migration The answer is D. Task migration occurs when traditionally higher-level leadership responsibilities are transferred to leaders at lower levels. This may be due to many organizations moving towards a horizontal, flat organizational structure, but it is majorly due to the greater speed and complexities of challenges and change in the business environment. Task migration frees up higher level leadership to handle issues of greater complexities and need. The HR department has determined that 10 new employees will be needed in operations, 7 new employees in marketing and 5 new employees in customer service to achieve the company's strategic goals. HR is engaged in which area in a workforce analysis process? Gap analysis. Supply analysis. Demand analysis. Workforce needs assessment. The answer is C. Workforce planning is the process of analyzing, forecasting and planning workforce supply and demand, gap analysis, and determining targeted talent management interventions to ensure that an organization has the right talent to fulfill strategic goals. Demand analysis involves understanding the future business direction of an organization, what its workforce needs are, and the number of employees required so it can deliver its goals. It involves determining the headcount the company needs in each job role for each organizational unit. Supply analysis, on the other hand, has both internal and external components. Internal supply refers to the workforce an organization already has, whereas external supply refers to potential sources and availability of staff to join an organization. What is the major outcome of a HR audit? Assess record-keeping practices for legal compliance. An action plan to address non-compliant and underperforming areas. 
Identify policies and procedures that are not being followed properly. Identify opportunities where new policies could be implemented to minimize risk, the answer is B. A HR audit ensures that all company policies and procedures are in line with the legal requirements necessary for that purpose. It finds critical HR problems and appropriate solutions to them. The major outcome, the result of the process, of a HR audit is an action plan to address non-compliant and underperforming areas. An action plan outlines the actions needed to implement the improvements. How does Peter Senge, author of the fifth discipline, define learning organizations? Organizations that strategically create or increase their market share through capacity development. Organization that increase their market share through participative leadership and flat structures. Organizations that achieve personal mastery through structured bureaucratic systems. Organizations where knowledge is centered in the area of expertise. The answer is A. A learning organization is a group of people working together collectively to enhance their capacities to create results. A learning organization is one that assumes learning is an ongoing and creative process for its members, and develops, adapts, and transforms itself in response to the organization's needs and aspirations. The five disciplines of a learning organization are, systems thinking, personal mastery, mental models, shared vision team learning. An organization needs to prioritize disbursements for its risk management initiatives. What would be the appropriate first step? Identify processes, individuals critical to the organization's delivery of value to stakeholders. Evaluate the risk management initiatives for effectiveness. Transfer the risk by obtaining employee practices liability insurance. Monitor and manage potential risks in order to reduce the negative impacts. The answer is A. The first step in any organization's initiative is need identification. The first step is to identify critical processes, individuals critical to the organization's delivery of value to stakeholders to determine the priorities and where to direct finances. This will help the organization focus its resources in the most effective manner. Identify the risk. This step involves uncovering, recognizing and describing risks that might affect the project or its outcomes. The steps in risk management is identify the risk, analyze the risk, evaluate the risk, risk response planning, monitor and review the risk. What is most helpful in forecasting future staffing conditions? Online employment boards. Risk and performance management data. Managerial informed decisions. Judgmental forecasts from industry experts. The answer is B. Forecasting involves identifying expected future conditions based on information about the past and present. This technology and performance management information provide the data necessary to make accurate data driven forecasting decisions. Forecasts of staffing needs are calculated based on company-wide needs and goals. Areas of staffing forecasts include, anticipated personnel headcount, the present supply of internal candidates and the supply of external candidates. Which of the following is prohibited by the National Labor Relations Act, NLRA? Employer domination of labor organization. Permanent replacement of economic strikers. Secret ballot representation election. Mandatory subjects for collective bargaining. The answer is A. An unfair labor practice is employer domination of unions or employer creation of mock unions as occurred in the Electromation v. NLRB case. The Teamsters Union had claimed that Electromation Incorporated's practice of using action committees to hear worker opinions was an unlawful company union under the National Labor Relations Act, NLRA. The NLRA seeks to balance the interests of management and labor and prohibits an employer from unfair labor practices such as union domination. The NLRA does not prohibit permanent replacement of economic strikers, the NLRA established mandatory subjects for collective bargaining, 
and union representation elections are by secret ballot. What part of job documentation provides a written statement of the necessary qualifications of the job incumbent? Job analysis. Job description. Task analysis. Job specification. The answer is D. A job specification is a written statement of educational qualifications, specific qualities, level of experience, physical, emotional, technical and specific necessary qualifications of the job incumbent. A job description provides detailed information of the job such as job title, job location, reporting to and of employees, job summary, nature and objectives of a job, tasks and duties to be performed, working conditions etc. Job analysis is the primary tool to collect and analyze job-related data. This process results in a job description and a job specification. What is the term for the system of rules and processes an organization puts in place to ensure adherence to laws, rules, ethical norms, and environmental and social codes of conduct? Corporate governance. Ethical culture. Ombudsman. Financial audit. The answer is A. Corporate governance is the framework of rules and practices by which a board of directors ensures accountability, fairness, and transparency in a company's relationship with its all stakeholders, financiers, customers, management, employees, government, and the community. It is the system of rules and processes an organization puts in place to ensure its compliance with local and international laws, accounting rules, ethical norms, and environmental and social codes of conduct. A CEO proposes that managers choose the best course of action based upon situational variables as different styles of leadership may be more appropriate for certain types of circumstances. The CEO is proposes what type of leadership theory? Trait theory. Situational theory. Behavioral theory. Management theory. The answer is B. Situational leadership theory states that different leadership styles should be used based on the situation in which managers find themselves. Trait theory states that leaders possess different traits than average people do. Behavioral theory states that how a person behaves determines leadership effectiveness. Management theories, also known as transactional theories, focus on the role of supervision, organization and group performance. DASH is an audit of healthcare usage and charges to identify which benefits are used and ensure certain costs are in line. Concurrent Review Benefits Analysis Healthcare Forecasting Utilization Review The answer is D. Utilization review is a critical evaluation of healthcare services provided to patients that is made for the purpose of controlling costs and monitoring quality of care. Did you find this video helpful? To help ensure more videos such as this are created, please subscribe and click on the like button.